Hello and welcome to the CRM Zen Show, where we talk about all things Zoho. This is episode 305 for May 31st, 2024, Disc Economics from uh, Zenata Consulting. I'm Brett Martin. And I'm Tyler Colt, and let's get right on into the show. Oh, we're dealing with my lighting issues here, Tyler. I'm in Austin. I'm on Lake Travis and in Austin, Texas, getting ready for Zoholics coming soon. So we will go. Um, should be, uh, should be a good show. Looking forward to it. We've got our hospitality booth. We're going to actually be doing our hospitality suite on Thursday night. That's right after the show ends at four o'clock. Um, we'll go and tell you, know, last call, whatever that would be two, three in the morning, probably you never know. Something like that. Something like that. Yeah. 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 So like tell your tickets run out. That's what it'll be. Um, (laughs) we'll go, we'll do that. Uh, anyway, uh, how have you been? Oh, doing good. Yeah, doing good. Rock and roll. And we had Greg on last week. Always a good fill in for you here on the show. Um, and yeah, looking forward to uh, seeing everybody at Zoholics in just uh, five days. It's coming up quick. I know. And the next show, I think we're going to do be a little different. Do a couple cameras. I guess we'll just be sitting on the couch with our laptops or something. And uh, away we go. That'll be a good show. So I'm on Lake Travis. Man, I tell you what, evidently. Texas is in a drought as well. The lake's down seventy percent. Um, wow. The brown, the brown you see behind me uh, used to be water. <laughs> it goes like the, this way, 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 way down. The brochures—they uh, don't change the brochures on the hotels or anything like that. Those still no, they shows don't. The full lake. Yeah. <laughs> you know, when you're when you're booking, it's like, hey, come here, a lovely lake, Travis. Uh, not to a little butt pot, but anyway, there are still some boats going around. It's big enough to do a little skiing on, I guess. But anyway, enough of that. Let's get right on into the show. But before we do, here's a quick word from our sponsor. Are you struggling to get your team trained and using Zoho effectively? Considering the hefty costs of team meetings and onboarding sessions dedicated to Zoho training, there has to be an easier way. Say hello to efficiency with our Zoho team training courses. Zoho CRM made easy. Become a project management pro, top tier customer support, and maximize your marketing impact. Are you ready to equip your team? Start today at zanata.com slash training and let us lead the way. All right. And uh, yeah, jumping right on into the news, uh, we have a little self-promoting news here in line with our sponsor. Um, So we are rolling out here very soon the training course for the marketing suite of Zoho. We're going to be starting that with campaigns. Over time, we'll be adding some of the additional applications to it. Um, So yeah, pre-orders there are going to start just this upcoming Monday. That's going to be June 3rd, 2024. Um, We always like to run that kind of heavy discount during that period. So if you're struggling with campaigns, make sure to mark the calendar, come back on over here and get a nice discount on the marketing team training. Yeah, and I think that goes live on June 14th, yes? Yep, that'll be when the course fully goes live. So we'll kind of have that that two-week early access period where we're offering the steep discount. Um, so yeah, make sure to check that out. Good way to get up to speed quickly and easily on the marketing suite for Zoho. Fantastic. All right, let's jump right on into it. Let's do it. So first story here in the world of actual Zoho news coming from Zoho Books this is a pretty minor one. Looks like they are updating just the URLs for the customer portals for Zoho Books. So previously books.zoho.com slash portal. Now books.zohosecure.com slash portal. Uh, must just be a different domain that they're instituting some tighter security policies around, um, given that you've got people that are not Zoho users logging in. Um, one important thing that I noticed with this is that it doesn't say anywhere that there will be a redirect. So if a user like has this bookmarked, I don't know that it's going to automatically push them over to the proper URL. So make sure just to yeah, update this does. to your customers, let them know um, that this change is coming down the pipeline. Yeah, I was reading through this. On one of them, it said it's going to redirect starting uh, on the 3rd, but they Got still it. won't recommend you change it. So um, change is effective. I'm good. I don't know. Maybe somewhere it said it would redirect, but users will not be affected. Yeah, automatically be redirected right there after uh, June 3rd. 
There oh, we there we go. Yep, it'll be redirected. So, yeah, it should yeah. be pretty yeah. uninterrupting, right? It shouldn't cause too much pain and suffering, but uh, let your customers know just so they know that this new URL is not a bug or a glitch. It's just a more secure point of access into the portal. And that's going to be the same for invoice and billing and all of them, yep. right? Yeah, yeah, we're highlighting it here for Zoho Books, but this will really be across the full finance suite. So wherever they're logging in for portal access, uh, that's going to change to zohosecure.com. Yeah, and all of those will have all the links. In the yep, all those links will be over there in the uh, newsletter. Uh, next one here coming from the world of Zoho CRM. Um, so some new options for validation rules inside of Zoho CRM. Uh, for those who don't know, a validation rule is essentially something that you can configure for a particular field uh, that checks if the input to that field is acceptable, right? And acceptable can be defined in a bunch of different ways. Um, they are essentially updating a few new configuration options for validation rules. Um, so you can actually have this uh, now validate while the user is typing in. Um, this is a really big update for user experience, right? Like if somebody is creating a new lead, they've typed in all this information, it's way better to let them know that their formatting is not correct while they're typing it before they go to actually click that save button. So just more like kind of how a client script works rather than like a deluge workflow um, as kind of a parallel. So just letting people know while they're actually on the page um, got this little button here. You can essentially verify to make sure that uh, the field that you're entering is actually going to fit that uh, criteria set. Uh, going to be available in a bunch of different pages, Canvas, lead conversion, stage pop-ups, uh, really just across the system. Um, here's another one that's kind of interesting. If you've got a validation rule, you can actually have it now like allow someone to move forward, but give them an alert. I would say like they they give a pretty good example here of when that might be useful is like a discount field where it's like, hey, we really don't want to go above 10%. We kind of want to warn you if you are, um, but we would let you go up to 15% with some kind of warning, right? So you can essentially not allow it to go above a certain amount, but allow it to go above another with some type of little warning. So just a nice one yeah. here for that particular use case. I think, again, discounts is like the most obvious time where I would consider using something like this. Yeah, just be, be careful with validation rules. I mean, how many times have you gone to a website and it says, what's your website? You type in your website, it says it's invalid because you didn't put a www or an HTTPS. Actually, Zoho Forms so, works. It's actually, yeah, yeah, that's how it works in Zoho Forms, which is a big pain in the butt. Yeah. You got the same thing with phone numbers, like sometimes put your phone number in invalid phone number field because you, you don't know what they want. Because they don't even give yeah. you what they want. So it's just a parentheses, yeah, and the, dashing, it's space. Yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> what's yeah, the big one here, I think, kind of in that in line with that is just making sure that you've put in messages. Like, make sure it's clear to people. Like, even if we go up yeah. here, like uh, their previous example, it just says invalid IBAN number. What would be a better tooltip is invalid IBAN number. It should look like, right? And then kind of give them an example of what you're looking for. Um, again, just users can get really frustrated with these things if you're blocking them from proceeding. Um, so like this is a much better tooltip here, like tell them what you're expecting, which in the case of the discounts is, you know, below 15 percent. Um, so just a nice one here. Again, it'll kind of do this little pop up if you're going to move forward with something that is, um, you know, outside of the norm. Um, then lastly, you can essentially just customize a bit of uh uh, view of the error location. So you can choose whether it should be on that field or at the top of the page. Again, just a preference thing around where you want some of these pop-ups uh, to appear if a user is entering data that's outside of the validation rules. Whether or not. Wait, All right, next on. one here from Zoho Recruit. Um, so this is kind of an interesting one. So they're essentially now allowing you to map fields from a lookup module. This is pretty similar to what they did inside of the CRM, um, where, you know, let's say you're linking a candidate to a job opening. You could say that you want to pull in a field from that job opening into the candidate record, right? So if you're watching us on uh, YouTube, you'll see this very quick little sequence of clicks here that they're doing um, that shows how you can set this up. 
But really, this is just something that eliminates one little deluge function that you might not need to write anymore, right? Because now that data can just pull right into the child record when you link it up to a parent record. Very nice. Less work for us. Darn it. There you go. Yep. (laughs) But uh, yeah, we always like these things because it's like stuff like this just should be supported. Like obviously you can do it with deluge, but it's such a common thing that uh, it is a a lot nicer if a client can just kind of set this up and manage it themselves. All right. Next one from the world of Zoho Writer. This is kind of in line with a a couple things I've noticed them doing with Writer where they're kind of letting admins set some like brand criteria. Um, I know that they had done this with like templated pages, headers, footers, things like that. Um, So essentially what they're doing here is introducing organization-wide fonts inside of Writer. So you can essentially now add a custom font and push it out to everybody in the org. Um, So those who've worked in Writer before know that you can download like a font set and upload it, but it's just for you. So like if Brett did that and he had a font he really, really loved and he used it inside of the proposal template, and then I looked at it later and wanted to make an edit, I wouldn't be able to use that font unless I also go and download it and upload it. Um, So now admins can essentially push those in and then push them out to all of the users just to save that time and effort of setting it up one by one by one. Fantastic. That's super nice, Tiff. I mean, I know that uh, Wayne is always complaining. We didn't use the right font, so (laughs) very helpful. (laughs) Yeah, marketers nice. rejoice. Um, yes. This would be nice to you to see in really like anything where you're building templates, email templates and CRM, you know, campaigns, templates over in Zoho campaigns. Just the more that you can standardize like the branding and fonts for any of the things that you're going to send to clients or prospects, the better. Yeah. And I would really recommend if you're going to do this, go with Comic Sans. It's always good. Oh, 100%. Sure yeah, or Wingdings. Well, you know. Wingdings is another that uh, it helps our close rate writing it in Wingdings. I'll tell you that. Wingdings is great. It's my favorite. But sometimes I just, I don't know what it says. Um, all right. It's been a lot. <laughs> Next one here for Zoho Desk. So uh, extending multi-channel support in guided conversations. This is a, you know, a category on a category here. So a guided conversation, if you don't remember, we haven't done a story on one of these in a little while. They're, they're pretty interesting. It's kind of like a blend of a like chat bot with a little bit of referencing your knowledge base and also routing it to appropriate users. So, you know, like an example would be from the original times that they rolled this out. Maybe you sell a physical product. Someone comes in, uses the guide to guide a conversation. They say, I have an issue with the product. It gives them an option of, hey, which of these products they select that and then maybe it routes it or it points them to a knowledge base uh, related to that particular product. Um, now, essentially what you're able to do is set up a unique guided conversation for each of your particular channels where you have these support items coming in. So whether that's like web support via WhatsApp, via an Android, you know, via email, actually, no, not for email because you're not doing chat on that. Um, So any of these particular areas where a chat can occur, you'll now be able to set up a unique guided conversation bot for that channel. It's kind of an interesting one because I don't know when I would want to use a different bot based on channel. Like whether someone's messaging me on the web app or an iOS app, I still want to know what product they've got. Um, so it could just be like are different you able to, users. Are you able to clone the, it looks like though you're able to set up you can, one yeah, thing. You could. The channels. Yeah. So if you're like, hey, I just need one, no problem. Just apply it to all of the channels. Um, so I guess for those who maybe notice that like, I guess the, the use case would be like, maybe you have a, an app, right? And you have an iOS app and an Android app. And mm-hmm. like the support needs to go to a different team, right? Like that is a case where I think it could make sense. Or like, hey, I'm in the the browser application versus a mobile app, right? And maybe we want to open up different support options. So I guess from that perspective, it does make some sense. Um, so yeah, a nice one. Again, if you don't need it, don't worry about it. Just use the same bot for all your channels. Um, but if you do want to branch your support, based on the channel that it's coming from, you can now do so pretty easily here inside of the guided conversations. Very nice. And this is in desk. Is this still using sales IQ? No. So guided conversations, you know, it gets, it gets so confusing with how they've like integrated, but also split functionality. It's separate from the sales IQ, like Zobot or answer bot 
it's kind of its whole own thing. Um, I'd have to imagine they're using some of the tools behind the scenes from Sales right. IQ, but it is it is separate and hosted within Zoho Desk. I asked that because they split off about two, three years ago. It used to be Sales IQ was the way they were the same, and then they kind of went different. So curious. Good. Yep. All right. All right. Next one here. Uh, we always like to cover these. This is, uh, you know, our monthly Shridhar said something interesting story. Um, so this is essentially Shridhar talking about district level economic engines uh, being the key to regional development. Um, he's always done kind of interesting things around how they structure their workforce over in India, kind of the hub and spoke model does a lot of development in some of the more rural communities rather than just having everything centered in the big cities. Of course, they have the big headquarters in Chennai, um, but they also have kind of pinwheel offices all over the country. So it's kind of an interesting one. Any Anything kind of stand out to you here, Brett, on, on yeah, this? Yeah, I mean, uh, this is part of his, you know, transnational localism, that kind of thing. I mean, they not only do it in India, they do it here. So, you know, they have, mm-hmm. a, have, a, corporate, they have a corporate headquarters here in Austin. Um, but then way, way down on the border in McAllen, Texas, they've opened an office. Yeah, I don't know, they've yep. got 10, 15, 20 people down there. And then they've got another office, which is kind of out in the, the, the suburbs here a little bit. Um, and so the whole idea, what he's talking about here, which I think is interesting, which is, you know, by spreading out these office districts, you could call them states, you could call them counties, whatever, you know, if you're over here in the states, you're saying, look, what is the economic impact that a that companies can bring to a specific area? You know, and his his whole thing is that you know in uh, Tamil Nadu, um, Zoho adds 100 million dollars a year, right? Which equates to 70 dollars per person um, that they're yep. helping out in that overall area. And by spreading out where your factories are, spreading out where your workforce is, you actually can bring up an area. So. With this in mind, I think, you know, take a look at the areas that are suffering economically and consider moving. And Zoho does an amazing job with this. They have Zoho University where they will put people through the university. And I I don't think they're guaranteed a job, but the odds are when they come out, they'll have a chance of having a job either with Zoho or maybe a partner or something like that. And it's, it's, it's one of these things where, you know, he's really focused on let's not forget the people that live in rural areas um, or, yeah. or economically disadvantaged areas, they have value too. So let's kind of focus on those areas. You know, I have no basis for the, the hypothesis I'm about to put out, but with a lot of this stuff recently, you know, he was awarded the Pat Marshri. He seems to be pretty tight with Modi, who's the prime minister. I wouldn't be surprised if he makes a run for uh, some sort of public office here down the road because <laughs> the way he's setting all this stuff up. But I don't know, yeah. but we will see Sridhar. We will see him. I mean, I think he's coming. He's going to be here at Zoolix. So he's making yep. that, that journey. Um, so really looking forward to sitting down and see how he's doing. So it'd be, I haven't seen it in like yeah. five years. I haven't seen him since 2019. Yeah, when I got um, that picture so before the uh, Pleasanton office. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. So it'll be, uh, it'll be good to, uh, good to catch up. Um, but anyway, yeah. a cool article. I think he's got a great idea here. I mean, I think it is. You know, he's also talking about you know import export and balancing imports and exports for a healthy economy. And I mean, it's important. You know, I mean, yeah. when that gets out of whack, it, it becomes it, you know you become a consumer society. Uh, Japan had has gone through that. The United States started to go through it, um, and I think we're trying to maybe reverse that trend. So, um, you know, as India emerges, is what I think is going to be a global power here, a big global power down the road. They have got the workforce, they've got the pot, you know, all of those kind of things. Um, it'll be interesting, interesting to see. So, yeah, it's one of those areas, you know, and I mention it, I feel like every time we, we cover a Shridhar article, um, Shreed article, if you will, um, that <laughs> this is one area that they really do kind of put their money where their mouth is, right? Like that, you know, when they, they talk about wanting to do things in these rural areas, and they really do, whether it's in India, whether it's in Austin, they do create a lot of economic opportunity in the software space where it normally doesn't exist. And this is something you and I talk about all the time, you know, Zanata being a fully remote organization, like, you just don't need to hire everybody in a big city, you know, to work on software. It's it's not necessary, right? You don't I... need to be in Silicon Valley paying $4,000 a month in rent to be a software developer, you know, and it, it doesn't matter where you are. Um, you've got smart people everywhere and it's uh, cool that they're tapping into that. So big shout out to Zoho 
Um, definitely an area where they they walk the walk on this one. Yeah, I don't know if you get asked. I mean, I get asked all the questions. So, where's your office? I'm like, well, <laughs> you know, right I'm here, in Las Vegas, and my sure. employees' offices are in their houses. Tyler's in Colorado, and you know, Landon's in South Dakota, and you know, Tom's in Jordan's South Carolina. in Canada, <laughs> Jordan's in Canada, Lucas is down in Brazil. It wherever you can find the very, very best people, and it doesn't matter. It's but you know, you can do development, and with the look with Zoom and go to meeting, all of those services, and just you can. It's really not even noticeable. It's not necessary. So, uh, and there are smart people all over. So, uh, I think it's a good idea. It's a nice article. Yeah, absolutely. And with that, I think we are ready to jump on into our implementation of the week. All right. So this one was actually built out by myself and uh, Maya, one of the newer additions to our development team. Uh, so this is automated project archiving via scheduled functions. Um, so within Zoho projects, it's important to know that projects are kind of in one of two statuses. They're either active or they're archived. Now, there are sub statuses to like, does that project have open tasks? Is it overdue? Um, none of those are what we're talking about today. We're talking more about like the binary. Is this open or is this closed? You know, archival status. And within Zoho projects, if you find yourself launching a lot of projects, it is a very good idea to archive them when you're done. Um, reason being is that the load speed of Zoho projects will improve significantly if you have less open and active projects kind of cluttering up the search, cluttering up the API as you're running functions. So for this particular client, they're a large client. They've got multiple hundreds of users in Zoho projects, and they essentially launch a project template for each type of like discrete activity that they're doing for their clients. Um, the reason we use the project templates here is that they can store all the various task dependencies. Um, what we did find, though, is that, you know, project counts are going up and up and up. Things are getting completed, but they're not always being archived. Um, so rather than trying to, like, build a human process of people remembering to archive the projects when they're done, we decided to automate it instead. So what we did is we essentially set up a table inside of Zoho Analytics that shows all projects that are completed basically meaning all tasks are completed, no new tasks have been created recently, and it hasn't been touched for a certain period of time, um, but that are not archived, right? So these are basically like projects that should be archived. Um, then all we need to do is set up a scheduled function that essentially on a regular basis will pull about 50 records from that analytics table. Then for each of those records, it will reach into Zoho projects and just archive that project for us. Nice thing is with archiving is that you can still find them if you go into the archived project list and sort there, and you could always just unarchive it, right? So it's not like this is deleted or really gone in any way, um, but it just moves it out of kind of like the working memory of the application so that things stay quick. You don't start running into like 100 millisecond delays in the API when you're searching for projects, right? That kind of throw things out of whack. Um, so good habit just to make sure that if you're using projects, especially if you're using it heavily, that you have some type of process for archiving things, whether it's manual um, because you want that last like approval check before you archive it. Or in this case, if we can set up some business rules and have it done automatically for us. Yeah, it's nice. So I, have a, I think I was reading on our clip channel. Is it there is a even though there's not supposed to be, isn't there a maximum number of projects as well? I think there like is. So there, there is a maximum. It, it it says this is something I have a bit of a bone to pick, but yeah, it, it, I don't know that they state this anywhere. But the limit that we found in this particular account was sixty thousand projects, um, because right. when we had fifty nine thousand nine hundred ninety nine, we could not create another. When we archived one, we were able to create one. So it doesn't that's... really say it anywhere, but that's the effective limit that we found because it was behaving like that was the limit. Um, and so right. we went through a couple processes with these guys where we manually loaded a bunch into a queue, but we wanted to just solve it long-term, right? So like every three hours, 50 get archived. We know for a fact that's plenty, right? They're not launching more than, you know, 50 a day, right? So we know that this is going to clear all of them out. Um, but yeah, there is that sneaky little limit. And, and now most people are not going to hit that. This client has a very specific way that they're using projects that's pretty intensive 
in terms of how many get right. created. Um, but as long as we set up the uh, flow accordingly, then they don't have to worry about uh, manually doing any of this. So when you archive a project, it takes away, it, it takes them below the 60,000 limit that we found. And you're yep. also finding it's 60, RC active. Yeah. Active. And you're also finding there are speed benefits though as well. Yeah, there's other benefits just in, in the speed of it. Like, I don't know if you remember, it was like last year, um, Zoho Desk, when they did the UI rebuild, they also set up automated archiving of tickets behind the scene yep. or a ticket that's been closed for like, was it two months or three months or something automatically gets archived. Um, the reason right. for that is load speed and speed of the API. It's It's basically just like, Imagine you need to like run a search records, find a ticket related to this customer. Well, if there's less total tickets, it'll find it a little quicker, right? Like it really has to like look at them all, right? To make sure that it's got the right one. So it's just some of those backend things like that we don't think about a lot, but that it, it does affect the speed of the application when it needs to do less work to find or, or update things. Nice job, Maya and uh, whoever, Tyler Holt. Yeah, not sure. Not sure who that is. Looks sure. questionable. Sure. Yeah, so this just proves you still, in fact, do have clients that you manage. So, I know. Do you yeah. have do you have a couple? Um, so with that, let us jump on over to uh, Club Z and go through our code share of the week. All right. So a bit of a double header. We've got two code shares, one from us, one from one of our contributors here over on Club Zanata. Uh, Club Zanata, if you don't know, is just our totally free uh, community page where we've got uh, people asking questions. Sometimes we answer them, sometimes other just Zoho users answer them. We post all the news over there. We've got uh, a couple different little forums here. Um, so one of the code shares we posted this week by our very own uh, Bruno was a build out of how to send a Zoho signed document for signature using a template just from a CRM button. Um, so we do this a lot. I think that the the normal integration between sign and CRM is a little bit lacking um, in large part because it doesn't save the field mappings uh, universally. So each user, the first time they use a template, has to map all the fields, um, which just for a lot of people, it's not going to work, right? You got 30, 40 salespeople, maybe onboard two or three a quarter, just having to go through and do it every time is a big pain in the butt. So we set this up pretty often, where from a custom button, we can essentially invoke the template ID, get all the fields from that, get everything mapped up, and then send it directly out for signature. Um, easily just from within the CRM. Um, this is like one of two ways you can do it. You can do this with the mail merge. Benefit there is it gives you the opportunity to edit the document. Um, if you don't need to edit it, then doing it this way is faster and just gets it right out the door basically immediately. So a bit of a choice on which way you want to do it. Uh, but this is one that we do employ pretty darn often for our clients. Yeah. And plus, when you make changes, which you're always going to make changes at the end of the day, then you're no one's going to have to remap that way as well and, and go through yep. and all that kind of stuff. So it, uh, definitely the way to go when doing these kind of things. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, other coaching. co-chair here from Justin over on Club Z. Um, so he has given a little bit of code here as to how to split a first and last name for a contact um, so essentially it looks like he went down the rabbit hole, found a different community post that didn't work for him. So he kind of built this thing out on his own, um, to basically run through and split out some of the names within a contact in Zoho desk. Um, so big shout out to Justin. Thanks for sharing this again. I just always like to think about the future developer, Google searching endlessly to find that perfect fix and then stumbling onto a code share like this that saves them from pulling their hair out. Um, so yeah, always appreciate when people jump in and uh, contribute over on Club Zen. Super, super nice, very nice. And Club Zen, it's Club Z is not necessarily free, Tyler. We do require an email, and True. you will get our you will get our newsletter. And occasionally, you might get an email from us saying, "Hey, it looks like you uh, you need to reset your Amazon password. Please click this link." Um, yeah, that's another yep. way we fund Sonata here is through hundred uh, percent. You know, yeah, little catfishing. So. <laughs> All righty, moving along. Uh, lastly, in the world of uh, coding here, we do want to do one more announcement for our coding competition. 
Um, this is kind of just something fun we're doing here within Zoho Creator. Uh, really what we're looking for is uh, Greg has built out a kind of, what did he call it? Zohodl, Zohodl, um, which is a bit of a play on Wordle. So really what this is, we want to see your best attempt at a guessing game where we can essentially recreate the functionality of Wordle inside a Zoho Creator. Um, this is linked over on Club Zen as well as on the website. So come on over, give us a shot, see what you got here. And uh, we'd love to see everybody's attempts at uh, building this. Greg does have an example yeah, in here somewhere as well. Um, if you do want to see kind yeah. of what we're looking for, uh, it's all linked in this post. Yes, and you'll get you a few you uh, submit. You'll get a free ticket to our mixer, which is going to be Thursday night, which we talked about. So we'd love to see you there. And I think there's some prizes, catch prizes as well. Um, I think so. Away. Yeah, we're doing some uh, oh. gift cards of the Zanata merch store. Um, Zanata merch store has so many different things in it. Josh has gone absolutely insane over time, uh, mostly for use by our internal employees. But uh, if you want a Zanata teddy bear, a Zanata bucket hat, a full sweatsuit, including shoes, uh, all branded Zanata. Was it a Zanata like baby shirt? I know Jordan's got that one yeah. uh, for the baby. Get him started that. young. Um, yeah, so I've got the, it's I've just got kind of for fun here. Off. But uh, say again. I said I've got the tennis shoes. I'll be wearing those uh, all around Zoholic. So it'll be exciting. You know, it's my there one time go. to actually use them. Yes. <laughs> and probably the only time they'll hold up for those things are shockingly inexpensive. Um, but yeah, yeah, so jump on over here. Give us your best shot. We'd love to see what everyone comes up with here for uh, their coding submissions in uh, the Zohodl game. Uh, so with that, let us jump right on over to what's new on Zanata.com. And it looks like here, Tyler, we're kind of basically uh, taking your very, very popular YouTube video. Um, from a few weeks ago, 10 free Zoho desk extensions and uh, kind of breaking them down. Yeah, so this is a video that we did. We've mentioned it a few times, but Zoho desk does this kind of funky thing where they come up with really cool new features and then they roll them out as marketplace applications rather than just adding them to the product. My thought has always been they do this to reduce clutter, right? Because not everyone needs all of these things. And, and I can see in some of them like, that I would probably want them in all accounts, like this customer insights one. Um, but then you may have some others that just don't matter as much to you, like geolocation, right? Like if you're a SaaS company, doesn't matter for you, right? If you're doing field yep. service, it's godsend, right? So I kind of go through all of these. Each of them is free. The one that does have a caveat is with geolocation, you will need to bring a Google Maps API key. Um, Zoho is not going to eat the cost for the Google credits. Um, but other than that, all of these are free and actually all developed by Zoho um, that you can just install into your desk account. So well worth taking a look at. Fantastic. And a little another fluff here. So we are releasing a marketplace app using the Google Maps API, which is going to pull in addresses. Um, has it been approved yet, Tyler? We're still going back and forth on the <laughs> logo. Still going back and forth okay. on the logo. Yeah, don't even get me started. Um, yeah, that'll be coming to Marketplace really soon for uh, Zoho CRM. Hopefully before Zoholix. We will find out. So. Uh, don't count on it. Um, and with that, <laughs> let us jump into our tip of the week. All right, so this has been a video I've been meaning to make for a long, long time. Um, this over on the YouTube channel is a full tutorial of Canvas View or Zoho CRM. Uh, Canvas View is essentially just a way to totally customize the look and feel of a record in your CRM. Uh, so I kind of go through setting this up for a deal. Um, I use a cheat code here that I recommend you use, which is starting from a template. Uh, don't start from scratch, you'll never finish that way. So I show picking a good template, swapping out some of the fields, adding custom information. We go over what all of the things on the left-hand bar are and when you might use them. And then we kind of show it in practice for a record that is actually in CRM. Um, so yeah, well worth taking a look at this. Um, what I always like to mention with Canvas is start simple and tweak it over time. If you try to go to the you know top of the skyscraper on your first go, uh, it's going to be super overwhelming. So just build a foundation, tweak it, adjust it, get some feedback from your team. 
um, and continuously improve it rather than trying to make it perfect right out of the gate because there's just so many options with these that uh, you got to start somewhere um, and just get yeah. it in front of the users. So question for you. Now that you can kind of, we, we used to have contests when this first came out. Um, it's funny, this was released at Zoholix 2019. This is when they first released this product. So we're now five yep. years into it. How is it on scaling? So if you build it out on a monitor that scaling has, you know, certain good. Specification, you know, yeah. Yeah. Scaling is pretty good at this point. Like, obviously, like if I tried to squeeze it, like, you know, into the third, like a third of my screen in a column, it's going to look a little funky. Right. But like if you're looking at it in the appropriate aspect ratio or close to it, um, scaling issues are a lot better now. Like, as you could imagine, like if we look at this uh, template here from the screen, like if I were to make my screen really, really skinny, there's just not going to be a place for some of this stuff to go. Um, but yeah, as long as you're not on like a very weird or like vertical monitor would be a little funky, I would assume. Um, but like if someone looks at it at like a 4K versus 1080p monitor, we don't see those types of issues that we used to uh, with the canvas view. No, very, very nice. And as always, over on youtube.com slash Zanata is where we've got all of our content. We're making three, four videos a week, monthly webinars, the podcast, the tip videos. It's all right over here. Um, so make sure to jump on over here and check out the channel. I'm sure you will find something that is useful for you. Yeah, no, no question of the week. No is Oz this week. Go no, down. no question of the week for this week. Uh, we will uh, look forward to making some tip videos around those questions in the future. Fantastic. All right. Well, good show. Well, it's about uh, 90 degrees with 500% humidity out here right now. So um, <laughs> it's, it's a little rough. Seemed like a good idea to do it out here. Give everybody a beautiful view, <laughs> but you know. I'm dying. Um, suffering for the art it, form, Brett. Suffering for the art form. <laughs> I suffer <laughs> for the art form. I know. I know. I want to thank everybody so much uh, for joining us uh, here on the CRM Zen Show. We hope to see you next week at Zoholics. If not, and you want to talk to us, you can always always head over to Zanata.com and click on Book a Meeting. We would love to talk with you about how we can help you with your Zanata installation. And on the website is where you'll also find complete episodes of the show, as well as links to all the stories we discussed today. If you want that news delivered to your inbox every Monday morning, be sure to subscribe to our newsletter. And last but not least, we always appreciate when you like and subscribe here on YouTube, as well as your choice of podcast app. We'll see you next Friday. Yes, with not your Zanata installation, but your Zoho implementation. Or <laughs> Close to God. Close enough. Yeah, it's, it's hot. I'm dying. I'm wilted here.